All right, what's up guys? Here we are gonna talk about panel bonding versus welding. Now, usually welding is always the best option, but there are some instances where panel bonding might be a consideration for what we're going to be fixing. And on this episode, we are going to talk about how I panel bond the heater box that's all covered up and how I didn't have to get the welder out because some people don't have a welder and they're not good at welding thin sheet metal so there's some things to consider when doing this type of repair uh, welding is usually a better result but this is going to be just fine for what we're doing let's check it out and if you guys like what you see here why don't you guys comment and see if this would work in your application or if you prefer welding let me know drop a comment don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you care to see more thanks all right, so we're working on the firewall here, and this heater box where the heater core sits, it's kind of rusty. Water must have been sitting in here, and it kind of created some pinholes here, as you can see. This is supposed to go like this. Well, I could get the welder out and start cutting this apart and welding, but you can kind of open a can of worms by doing that. So the route that I'm going to go, because this heater box does come out here pretty far and wraps around here I am going to use what's called panel bond okay this is just a different brand but 3M makes it as well 8115 would be the part number for the 3M brand and I'm gonna run tape on the back side of this and I'm gonna brush this panel bond on here and this panel bond I'm gonna um, just fill in all these holes and it's gonna get rock hard and seal everything up and I'm going to try to make a little piece here because this is just for the heater box and like I said if if we cut this open it could where do you stop sometimes so we're just going to try this it's going to work great I know it will um, I use this stuff all the time um, this is for putting on paneling on vehicles for roof skins and quarter panels and you name it they use it everywhere of course they weld up with it too but um, let's get it masked up. All right, so to use this panel bond stuff, you're going to need an applicator gun like this. So, it's like a caulk gun, it's just for the panel bond. So put that in there. I, this is already a half used tube. Then, you replace the tip. You got to make sure that the plunger works, see how both, so you give it just a little bit, squeeze the trigger a little bit and see how both is coming out, that means that both the plungers on these are equal, so we're okay now to put this on. Now an important step here is to, when you squeeze the trigger, have some come out onto a rag, because the part coming out of here is not mixed. So I'm going to, so when we squeeze the trigger, it mixes in the tip, okay, and then you want to go about, I don't know, about an inch or so, and don't use that because that is not mixed. Now that we have some out and I clean this up, this, this metal is very thin, so I couldn't really, really hit it, but this is going to be sandwiched in between the two, um, the heater box. So now we can apply it. it this stuff can go over, directly over bare metal, no problem. It's, it's uh, formulated uh, to go over bare metal. So now we're just going to kind of make a lip for this and fill in all the pinholes and we'll take a body spreader and flatten this all out. And then you got to let this stuff cure for a, a while and then we can come back and flat sand this all and uh, it'll fill all these pinholes and uh, this will just do the trick for what we're using it for. <laughs> this is kind of like a band-aid repair but it's a better than band-aid repair because it will get hard and it will hold up. And then I'm going to also do the inside of it too after we're done here because I just put tape on the back side. So now we'll just flatten this out. 
Yeah. Now, the, it's when you spread this, or if you ever use this stuff and spread it, it's not like body filler. This stuff has glass beads in it, okay? It's for when you use it between two pieces of metal, when it clamps, it won't squeeze it out 100%. Those glass beads are there to make up the thickness that it requires to make the ultimate ex um, strength and adhesion. So when you spread this, you'll see little dimples everywhere and those and if you actually you put this on a glove and you go like this with it you'll feel those little glass uh, pebbles or beads in there again this is just a quick fix um, I could get the welder out but you could you could really chase this and this car isn't going to be perfect it's it's we're, we're going to get it up and going and, you know for the things that we're doing for it we could still be stuck on step one of this car and upset so um, this is just going to be just fine now you have a long time to work with this stuff um, this stuff it says you have work time of 90 minutes so some of this stuff is some other materials you only have like 30 seconds a minute five minutes work time so you don't have to rush with this stuff but the drawback is you're going to have to leave it sit overnight. It should have just enough to do the inside of it when this stuff dries. And it does have a nice body to it, so um, you can apply it and it will stay in place. It's not real runny. Alright, so, and then I put a little piece of tear-off tape right here because I didn't want any panel bond in one specific area. So I'm going to pull that right now, which I hope I don't make a mess. There, and that's the hole for the heater core. And that's that. So here's what we end up with. Sorry for being a little crooked. But just a nice flat area. You can come back and sand this with like 180 or 80 grit. Uh, I'll probably just use 180 and flatten it off. And then um, we can just leave it like that. We are decided to paint the firewall now. So, yeah, right, Dad's laughing. So, um, that's where we are with that. All right, so we now have let this sit overnight and come back the next day. And it is hard. But now, so what happened is the tape after it's sitting and this panel bond does warm up a little bit it kind of like got wavy which is going to be okay so here's what I'm going to do I'm going to peel the tape off okay and now it's it's in pretty good shape here it's we're, we're doing good we gained a little bit of area here for this to seal a little bit better okay so I could lightly sand this but I potentially risk going through. So what we're going to do is do the back side right away. So I'm going to clean up the back side and then I am going to panel bond the back side so that I'm going to make up the thickness of the low spots here of the tape. Maybe I should have put a piece of metal back here to keep that nice and flat, but I was going to do the inside anyways. So these couple pinholes that were over here are full. So let's do this inside now. All right, so here's where we are on the inside. You can see how much of this panel bond has actually, how, how much I've made on here. It's actually almost like even to where it should be. So um, I'm going to sand this up a little bit and then come by and apply some more with a body filler spreader and then leave it sit overnight. And then we're going to sandwich this in between here and 
I mean, it are, look at how much it's already held already. Uh, this stuff's pretty incredible on in what this stuff can do. Um, so um, let's get this cleaned up. Okay, so I got it best as I could cl get it cleaned up. It is pitted on the inside pretty well here. I mean, this car is by no means absolutely rust-free, but, you know, there is rust in here. So there's only so much that we're going to be able to do. So... I'm going to call it good here, and now I'm going to take some body fill, or I'm going to take my body filler spreader and just coat this right here and fill in any other pinholes, and uh, it's going to seal it up real nice. All right, so I want to show you this trick about, um, about these cartridge tubes. So now this tube, we're almost to the end here. You can see down in here that there's only a little bit left. So if we have to use up a whole tip we're probably gonna run out and then I'm um, not nah, I don't have any more so one thing you can do is once you take the tip off okay now we can just pretend like it's body filler we can just squeeze it out onto our mud board here and just mix it by hand and we don't have to worry about using up a tip and we can use the end, the end, the whole tube here. So just mix it. Proper amount is the ratio is already on there, which this stuff is actually mixed two to one. So just mix it up real good now. So I got that all cleaned up. I'm not even gonna tape it. And these holes, if we get some in the holes, we can just um, come back and ream them out with a drill bit. So then we're going to let this sit. We can get this applied. And now we can let this sit overnight again. And now we can straighten it in the more, or tomorrow. big low spot right there it's right where the tape was the worst so that's gonna need the most the most there but I'll probably sand it all off anyways most of it but we want to make sure that we got enough to straighten what we need to Now we could have got really fancy with this and put some mesh in there and it could have made it super strong too if we needed to, but I didn't do that. Again, you got 90 minutes to work with this stuff. So it's not like body filler will only have a couple minutes. So that's the, what's nice about material like this is you don't have to rush but you can't get it done right away either then too you gotta let it sit overnight all right I think I'm gonna call that good there so we will let this sit Alright, so now we let this sit for a couple days, didn't get a chance to do anything. So now I'm going to grind this flat. I'm going to just use an angle grinder and I'm going to come by and just flatten this off initially. Then I'm going to come back with a, with a DA sander and just sand it flat. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Actually, let's go on the outside of the firewall and uh, clean that up out there. All right, so here we're going to try to flatten and shape this and uh, get this to look as much as cosmetically good. Even though most of this is covered, we're going to flatten this off.
take the little mini DA sanded it all now that gasket will just be great it has a nice smooth surface and we made this all out of that panel bond and I just did a rough finish on it like that not too bad you can use like they have like a fiberglass mesh that we could have put on here um, but it was so thin and I knew I was going to be grinding on it. I just decided not to go that route. But uh, I think it looks pretty good for a quick, easy repair rather than getting the welder out and making a mess out of this. But this is just what works for this application. All right, now that we got that all sanded on the inside and the outside, I'm just going to scuff this up a little bit get any of the flakes off of here. We're just going to put some rattle can on this. I mean, I mean, ultimately what you could do is, you know, try to get all that bare metal or all that rust off of there and clean it up as best you can. I mean, you could spend hours doing this. It's just for the heater box. So I'm not going to get too carried away. Um, it's going to be fine after we put some rattle can on there and it'll hold up fine. The stuff that I'm going to use here is called um, Easy Coat. It's by SEM and this stuff you can go over bare metal and you don't have to top coat it. So this you can just put on there and that's it. That's all you have to do. Got to hang a piece of cardboard out there. This stuff dries relatively very quick, so that was only a couple minutes. Put the second coat on now. And here's the final result after everything is painted. Okay, so now all we have left to do is paint the rest of this parts. We have the uh, other inner fender liner to paint, um, a couple other parts that I'm going to be painting here as well the heater box, the inner, and the outer, and a few other little trinkets. So stick around.